Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington from Learn Your Land. And whenever I think of medicine, I don't think of doctors, I don't think of pills and plastic orange bottles, I don't think of Walgreens, Rite Aid, Farmore. Whenever I think of medicine, I think of plants, I think of forests, I think of trees, and I especially think of mushrooms that grow on trees. You know, throughout history, countless cultures have used mushrooms for thousands of years for both food and medicine. And what's fascinating is that modern research continually unravels the important healing benefits of medicinal mushrooms. In this video, what I'd like to do for you is share with you three new pieces of important information on three separate species of medicinal mushrooms. And if you're not familiar with medicinal mushrooms already, hopefully this video will inspire you. If you stick by to the end of it and you don't turn it off right now, it'll inspire you to get out, harvest these mushrooms, and make them a part of your life. You know, if you're experiencing a certain health condition or several health conditions and you can't quite get a hold on them, look into the medicinal mushrooms. No, they're not a cure for everything, but you'll often find that these mushrooms can address certain conditions that you thought were unsolvable, or at least they can help to unlock the door to allow new healing opportunities to enter your life. And I may be speaking in vague terms right now, and I get it, you wanna know exactly what these mushrooms can do for you. Well, let's look into the research. So an overarching commonality between medicinal mushrooms is that they possess anti-cancerous properties. And this mushroom right here, Ganoderma suge, or the hemlock rishi mushroom, is no exception. You see, a normal part of day-to-day -day living involves cellular proliferation. This is when two cells are formed from one. Cell division, cell reproduction, it happens to all of us every single day, no problem. However, when left unchecked, when unregulated, especially with mutated cells, this can lead to cancerous spread, cancerous growths in our body. So to inhibit the cellular proliferation is important to stop cancerous growths from spreading in our body. A new study from 2015 has shown that a hot water extract from this mushroom, so think of a tea or think of a decoction, something that's very easy to make at home, has the ability to inhibit cellular proliferation of human leukemia cells and human liver cancer cells. And it works through two mechanisms. One is apoptosis and two is necrosis. Apoptosis is programmed cellular death. Think of it like cell suicide. It's considered a milder process to help eliminate dysfunctional or damaged cells compared to necrosis, which is a form of cell injury that is usually caused by extracellular physical or chemical changes. And this leads to inflammation, whereas apoptosis doesn't necessarily lead to inflammation, but both of these are mechanisms behind inhibiting cellular proliferation of cancerous growth. And it seems that a hot water extract, a tear decoction from this mushroom, Ganoderma suge, has the ability to do that with human leukemia cells and human liver cancer cells. Now the Rishi mushroom, Ganoderma suge, is one of my favorite mushrooms to seek out every June and July here in western Pennsylvania. And if you're looking for this mushroom, look at fallen hemlock trees. That's its substrate. And if you're interested in learning more about this mushroom, I created a detailed video on its identification and its medicinal properties, and I'll link to that down below. You can also find this mushroom in much smaller numbers this time of year. I found a fresh fruiting body in December before, but usually you'll find it in June and July. This is a dual extracted tincture that I like to take every night before I go to bed. So it has an ethanol extract, which is an alcohol extract, combined with a hot water extract. So I'm probably getting some of those anti-cancerous properties in here because there's a hot water extract in here. This is very easy to make, doesn't take too long. And if you're interested in learning how to make your very own reishi mushroom dual extracted medicine, I created a free guide to medicinal mushrooms, which includes instructions on making dual extracted tinctures and decoctions and a whole lot more. If you'd like to receive a copy of that, shoot me an email at adam at learnyourland.com. Let me know that you watched this video, maybe that you enjoyed it too, hopefully. Let me know you'd like a copy of that guide and I can send it your way. But again, this mushroom has been shown to possess anti-cancerous properties against human leukemia cells and human liver cancer cells. The second piece of research that I'd like to discuss with you involves a closely related mushroom to Ganoderma suge. And this one's Ganoderma lucidum. It doesn't grow on fallen hemlock trees, but it grows on hardwood trees, and it's another reishi mushroom. In fact, it's the classic Ling Chi mushroom, the one that's been used in traditional Chinese medicine for thousands of years. Now, it may or may not be a North American species. Many people will tell you that it does grow here in the wild in North America. I've been to several mushroom forays where it has been brought into the identification table and supposedly labeled as Ganoderma lucidum. However, if you look at the research, there hasn't been a Rishi mushroom species fully sequenced that proves to be Ganoderma lucidum. Now, it's not to say it's not a great mushroom. In fact, it's a fantastic mushroom. You just may not be able to find it in the wild, but you may, who really knows? 
And what this new piece of research shows is that Ganoderma lucidum, Rishi or the Ling Chi mushroom, improves physical fitness in women suffering from fibromyalgia. So fibromyalgia is a condition characterized by pain, by stiffness, by tenderness all throughout the body. It afflicts 5 million Americans. 80 to 90 percent of them are women over the age of 18. Not to say it doesn't afflict children or men, but in the majority of cases, it's women. And the study showed that six grams a day, so three grams twice a day, dissolved in water for six weeks, improves upper and lower body muscular strength, improves balance and agility, improves aerobic endurance, and more in women suffering from fibromyalgia. And they didn't really fully identify the mechanism behind it. They think it might have something to do with antioxidants, but they weren't fully sure. Now, fibromyalgia may have an autoimmune component to it. Some research shows that fibromyalgia may be autoimmune in nature, but it's not proven that it is. If it is, this would make sense because several medicinal mushrooms contain compounds known as beta-glucans, which help to modulate the immune system, either stimulate it or bring it back down. And if fibromyalgia is an autoimmune condition, that means the, uh, the immune system is working on overdrive. It's too high, it's too hot, it needs to be brought back down. And perhaps the Ling Chi mushroom, Ganoderma lucidum, can help to bring this back down and to alleviate some of the pain and improve physical fitness in women suffering from fibromyalgia. And here's what's great about Ling Chi. One, it's very easy to acquire. You can order it online. Two, it's very inexpensive as well, and it's very easy to take. Three grams twice a day for six weeks improve physical fitness in women suffering from fibromyalgia. So if you're not familiar with this mushroom, I encourage you to look into it. It's one of the first ones that I got to know, and I started ordering it from bulk suppliers online. And then I started harvesting my own Ganoderma suge out in the wild. But look into it and see if it may help you or someone that you know who is afflicted with fibromyalgia. The third piece of research that I'd like to discuss with you is great because it involves a very common mushroom, one that many of us are very familiar with. And that's the classic oyster mushroom, Pleurotus ostriatus. It's something that's very common out in the wild, especially this time of year. And you can also find it cultivated. You can find it at the grocery store. Now, a brand new study found that an antimicrobial compound has been identified from the oyster mushroom, from a hot water extract of the fruiting body. So think of a tea or a hot water decoction. Again, something that's very easy for us to make at home. And this antimicrobial compound is both antifungal and antibacterial. The research shows that it's antibacterial against E. coli and Staphylococcus aureus, and antifungal against Candida albicans. Candida albicans is a fungus that normally resides in healthy levels in our gastrointestinal tract. However, overgrowth of this can lead to an undesirable condition known as candidiasis. So this mushroom may have anti-candida properties. It also is antifungal against a fungus known as trichosporin, which can lead to fungal skin infections. So a hot water extract from the oyster mushroom possesses both antifungal and antibacterial properties against candida, against trichosporin, against staphylococcus aureus, and against E. coli as well. And again, it's a hot water extract. We can make this by making soups at home or by making teas, drying the mushroom first and making teas from it. Now, the oyster mushroom is one of the easiest mushrooms to identify out in the wild. Pleurotus ostriatus is one that you will usually find in fall through early winter. However, there are several species of oyster mushroom that you can find all year round. This one, the common oyster mushroom, Pleurotus ostriatus, is characterized by having white caps and they grow in shelf-like clusters on wood. If you look on the underside, there are gills that run down the cap and the caps almost end in a central stalk, but it's a very small stalk. Sometimes you won't even find a stalk at all. And the spore print of the oyster mushroom is white to a pale lilac, but it's very easy to find. And if you do find, I encourage you to bring it home. You could dry it out, although most people usually cook it fresh, but if you want to harvest it for these medicinal properties as depicted in these studies, perhaps you would want to dry it out, make teas from it, or make soups from it as well. And you can get some of these antimicrobial properties against Candida, against Staphylococcus aureus, against Trichosporin, against E. coli as well. And there we have it. Three new pieces of information documenting the important medicinal benefits of three species of mushrooms. Ganoderma suge, the hemlock rishi mushroom, Ganoderma lucidum, the ling chi rishi mushroom, and Pleurotus ostriatus, the common oyster mushroom. You know, ever since incorporating mushrooms into my life several years ago, I've noticed numerous benefits. And many people might think that mushrooms can explain away everything in the history of the world, that they're the cure for everything, whether personal or global, that they can explain away religions, they're the reason for religions, that they're the reason for existence. 
and I may or may not fall into that camp. However, I certainly know one thing, that I would not be who I am today if it weren't for this special kingdom of life. And I know that you can experience similar benefits, if not more, in your life if you just give it a shot, if you just give it a try. What do you have to lose? Thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you could do two things for me, that would mean the world to me. Number one, if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting subscribe down below, that would be great to stay up to date with all the videos that I plan on releasing. And number two, if you could go to learnyourland.com and join the community in the database of naturalists so you can stay up to date with nature walks in your area and see when I'm releasing new articles and new videos related to the beautiful flora, fauna, and of course the fungi of our beautiful earth. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.